Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's Ruins. Today we're in Madrid, Spain, in the Retiro Park. Literally my favorite places to chill out and relax in this amazing city. And today what we have for you are 10 things that shock tourists when they come here to Madrid. And it's a really awesome city, so sometimes I'm really searching for things that really shock you because you will love it here. But the first thing that shocks a lot of tourists, whether they're coming from Northern Europe or the US, is how late things get going here. And when I talk about things being late, we're talking if you want to go out and party and stuff like that, it is late, late night. If you're coming home before three or four, you're a grandma, basically, okay? But it's okay if you can't hang with them. But for a tourist, probably what's going to affect you most about this lateness is lunch doesn't really start until one o'clock. Those great deals you'll have with the menu of the day, they don't start until one. And dinner, a lot of the restaurants don't actually have their kitchens serving food until nine o'clock at night. So you're eating dinner nine, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Those are the times. So make sure you adjust your, your kind of eating schedule for that. But the thing is, you don't have to worry if you don't meet like one of those eating times because it seems like the second thing that shocks you is the Madrileños, the, the people from Madrid, always seem to be snacking and eating. And I was talking to one of the locals. I said, why is it it seems like people have like a breakfast and something else or like hobbits and stuff like that? He's like, well, we kind of are because we have a saying. We've got five fingers and we have five meals. We have breakfast about 7, 8 a.m. Then we have second breakfast about 10 or 11. And then we have lunch between 1 and 2.30. And then we have merienda, like a snack, and that's about five or six. Uh, and as a good Spaniard, you'd have like coffee and a cigarette, you know, kind of stuff. And then you have dinner at nine o'clock at night. And you'll see is here in Madrid, you know, if you've got to wait for people to do something, you'll grab a coffee or you'll grab a drink. And then if you get a drink, they'll give you a little tapas, you have a little snack, you have a little something here and there. And it is kind of shocking just how often these people are snacking on little things, but how thin and good looking they are. I'm watching you, Madrilenos. How do you do this? I need your secret, okay? Now, the third thing that might shock tourists when they come here is how much the people in Madrid smoke. And not just smoke, but a lot of people like roll their own cigarettes. And then when you're walking around town, you might you know, smell that wacky tobacco as well. But people do smoke a lot here in Spain in general, but especially Madrid. I'm with a group of uh, students here and they, you know, they've been going out and they're like, why does all my stuff smell? It's like, well, it's because of the smoke that's out there. And like, oh yeah, because we're used to in the US and other parts of Europe, you have a lot more bans on cigarette smoke and cigarette smoking is bad and stuff like that. And, but here people do smoke a lot. So be prepared for that. Now the fourth thing that shocks tourists when they come here is they think, oh, I'm coming to Spain. I'm going to have paella and I'm going to have sangria. And they go to Seoul, the center part of here in town. Really cool place to go to see things. Go to Plaza Mayor and the Plaza Real and all kinds of stuff. But what shocks them is how watered down the sangria is in the center of town and how crappy the paella is in the center of town. Look, if you're going to have, you want to have sangria here in the center, like there's good sangria around Madrid, but in the center where all the tourists go, it, it, it does get watered down. So what I recommend is have the Tinto de Verano, which is like kind of like Sprite or Fanta with wine. That works a lot better than the kind of crappy sangria. Also the paella, if you go to a place and it has a sign with 10 different versions of paella out there, realize all 10 of those versions are microwaved, okay? So don't get paella at those places. There's other things you can get. Um, arroz, arroz uh, caldoso is a, is a nice uh, like rice stew option that can have chicken or seafood in there instead of that, okay? But don't be shocked if you're like, wow, sangria and paella sucks. Well, yeah, if you're in the center of Madrid, it will more or less probably suck, okay? So, because it's a tourist trap thing. And when I talk about the center of Madrid with this paella and sangria stuff, I'm talking like Seoul and around the Seoul station, the Seoul, you know, uh, the Puerto del Sol, the main thing where the bear is and stuff like that. It's around there. Once you get farther out, you're not going to have any problems with the sangria or the paella kind of stuff. But just know like in that center touristy part, that's where the issues are. Now the fifth thing that shocks tourists when they come here is all the great deals you can get on food and drink and fun here in Madrid. One thing is you'll see a ton of bars that have their one euro thanks for a shot or a beer or something like that. You can really save a lot of money when you come here because it is an affordable place. But probably the best deal you're going to have is you have the menu of the day, the lunch menu at these restaurants. They'll give you a choice. Well, first off, you get bread, you get a drink, you get a starter. And the starters here in Spain are fantastic. And then you get a main dish and then you can get dessert or coffee. So think about it. Five things you're going to get 
for like 10 to 13 euros. And the thing is the food is fantastic and you get to have a great selection of it and it's a great deal. So I do recommend you have that lunch be your main meal because you can have so much good stuff that way. And also in terms of tourist shopping, if you go to the markets instead of the shops, if you go to the markets like the open air markets and stuff like that on the weekends or some of the other markets around town, you can get huge discounts on a lot of the stuff that tourists buy when they're here. So you might want to take, you know, check out some of those markets as well. Now, the sixth thing that might shock people when they come here is the two prices. There's two prices when you go to a little bar or something like that. There's the price at the bar, and then there's another price if you sit down. Usually it's about a 10% kind of surcharge when you do sit down. That's why when you go to the bars, the little like kiosks and shops and cafes, you'll see a lot of people, old ladies, old guys, young people, they're sitting at the bar having their coffee or having their beer or having their tapas because it is actually a different price at the bar than sitting down. And I have heard some tourists complaining about that. Why was it, you know, two euros there and now it's 250 here? They're like, well, sir, you're, you're sitting at the table. So if you want to save a little money, just go to the bar like the Spaniards and you can talk to them because the people here in Madrid really are super friendly. Even if you don't speak that much Spanish, they'll still talk to you. So it is pretty kind of fun. Now, the seventh thing that's going to shock you, remember I told you that the Madrileños are the people from Madrid are really friendly and they're really nice, but you really see that in the police officers here. The policia uh, of, of this city, they are super helpful. If you're lost and you don't know where to go, or you're not sure where a site is, just ask them. They are super nice and super helpful. Maybe even if they don't speak English, if you got your map and stuff like that, they will give you good directions. And for me, honestly, in terms of helpfulness, London cops are by far the most helpful. Madrid cops are right below there because they are, I mean, they are really super nice and super helpful. And some of my female friends, they, they've said they're super hot as well. So, hey, helpful, hot, why not? Okay, so don't be worried about talking to them to get some help. Now, the eighth thing that shocks some people when they come here is the summer heat and the summer exodus that happens in August. Look, Madrid gets unbearably hot in August, even in late July, you know, high 30s, even 40 Celsius, so like in the hundreds in Fahrenheit, and it is so oppressively hot here. And the thing is, in Spain in August, most people have vacation then. So literally, the city kind of disappears, and so all the people you have here are other tourists, okay? But it is super hot and super not full of Spaniards. So that is one thing that kind of shocks people when they come here in August thinking, oh, I'm on vacation. I'm going to hang out with the Spaniards and practice my Spanish and do stuff. And they're not around, okay? Now, the next thing that shocks people is I'm here in January and I am freaking cold, okay? When people think of Spain and Madrid, they think, oh, it's Spain. It's warm. It's always hot. It's great. Well, yes, it's warm most of the year. But here in Madrid, it can get chilly. I mean, I have a t-shirt shirt, and jacket on, and I really wish I had one of my Walters World pullovers right now because I'm cold. Because once that sun starts going down, you really start to feel the chill. And when you're here in Madrid, there's a lot of really cool day trips. Toledo, Segovia, Vila, El Escorial. There's a lot of cool places you can go. But like Segovia is like another thousand feet higher and it gets a lot colder. Avila, I remember the first time I went to Avila, I thought I was going to freeze to death. I was so cold because I didn't wear enough stuff. So if you're going to be coming to Madrid in December, um, January, February, make sure you bring some extra layers because Spain isn't always warm and Madrid is not always warm. So be ready for that. And a tenth shock I have for you is how low the ceilings are in some of the metro stops. <laughs> well, honestly, some of, the, some of the metro places it is actually kind of a low ceiling. So if you're over like 6'2", be careful. If you've got your kid on your shoulder, be careful because they're going to bonk their head. But honestly, actually, the tenth shock will be um, if you're on the metro, you really need to pay attention because you might be shocked how many pickpockets and stuff actually happen towards the center of town, like the Seoul Station and stuff. You do want to be careful. One of the tips we got from some of our local friends here was if you notice your wallet missing, don't freak out. Just go back the way you came and look on the ground and look in the trash cans because the people that pick pockets, all they want is the cash. They don't want the cards or the other things. So they'll take the cash out and then just throw the wallet on the ground and you might find it there, okay? So do check those things out. Anyway, those are 10 little, you know, tiny little shocky things that might happen if you are here in Madrid. It is a fantastic place. I've been here many times. I've taught here. I've had students here. I've had a great time. I wrote my family here before, my best friend here before. It is a really awesome time. So if you want to come, 
do come. You also might be shocked that here in Retiro, they have a statue of the devil, El Angel Caído, the fallen angel. So you can check that out. It's actually at 666 meters up. Do, 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 do. So be ready for that. Anyway, if you want to learn more about Spain, 10 things that'll shock you about Spain, what you should eat in Spain, uh, five things you love and hate about Madrid, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions. And if you like travel videos like this, we put out two a week. So why don't you click that, you know, subscribe button and you get these our videos in your feed every week so anyway i'll say adios de madrid and have a great time and you won't be shocked how much you will love this city it is a fantastic place adios de madrid